You would think by now I'd get the hang of getting up here on time. Apparently not after five Sundays. Uh, good morning and welcome to Golden Grove Lutheran Church this morning. I'm Joel Schiller. I'm the youth coordinator here at Golden Grove Lutheran Church. Uh, welcome to you all. Um, thank you all for joining us this morning. Also, thank you to those joining us online at home. Uh, be sure to comment or text my number. That's my number on the screen. Um, if you have any, I don't know, questions in general or um, if you've got any prayer requests, you can chuck them up there. Also, the prayer request email is there as well. Last night was, I don't know, a winning sort of night. I'm talking about the Adelaide Crows winning over Carlton. Um, I, I didn't see the game because I was here at the trivia night having fun. Uh, so our team, our, our young people table, came fourth in the end. Uh, be sure to check out the scoreboard there to see who won. Um, actually, who won? Uh, Maz, who's on the takeover on 107.9 Life, she organised a young adults table from her church, and her table won, so I think that was pretty cool to see. Um, or second? Second? Or f second. Oh, it, was Al it was Alison's table, wasn't it? Alison's table who won. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, great night last night. Um, no controversial questions. I think the only one might have been the uh, how do you, s what's the only word that's incorrectly spelt in the dictionary? Incorrectly. Um, but I think that was good. That was good. It, the answer was in the question. So cool. Uh, we've got the Salt Factory Band joining us this morning. Um, so great to have you guys here bright and early. <laughs> And we've also got Pastor James Winderlich, the principal at ALC, um, who's sharing the message this morning. So, uh, yeah, we'll get right into it with the invocation. Set your minds on things that are above. For you have died. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We say the psalm for today um, responsibly. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The meditation of my heart will give you understanding. Why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me? No one can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for them. So that, we sh uh, so that they should live on forever and not see decay. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations, though they had named lands after themselves. We own our humanness, O oh God, would you say together? We know that there have been many moments when we have failed to be true to the hope of the reign of God and the unity we know is found in you. We have not always received the gifts which lie within our deferring human journeys or in the insights which we could share. We have been tempted by things and false realities rather than the wonder of new life with each other. Forgive us, loving God, and call us on to truly walk with you. This we pray in hope and faith. Amen. God, in Christ Jesus, holds us in love and will lead us into a new journey together and a future filled with hope. We are forgiven. And please stand for our first song, Multiplied. Thank you. 
township in galaxies of form. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. The stars are made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart.
Grab a seat. So ministry update today, I'm um, doing it on youth. So on Friday night, we kicked off our youth program for term three. Uh, we began with a Nerf war, so we had obstacles and all that set up in here. Um, last term, one of the youth events we did was a How Ridiculous Night. So some of you who know different um, channels on YouTube, um, there's a channel called How Ridiculous, and basically it's three Christian guys from Perth who do ridiculous stuff. So we decided to do the same at youth last term for one of the events. So if we roll the footage... So we uh, smashed things. So that was a slow-mo of a remote being smashed. It turns out it was just the wood. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we did a bunch of different slow-mos. That was a donut maker. Um, that was my favourite. Um, and, yeah, we just wanted to give it a go, see what it looked like. Blowing out candles. I think that was Kendall who did that one. Um, why not use a spatula to see how many candles you can blow out. But, yeah, so that was one of the youth nights we did. We wanted to see what we could do with slow-mo. We used the cameras in here as well. Um, so we sort of we were blessed to be able to use them. Smashing Skittles. Holly was smashing Skittles. See if smash a plate, but a bit of fun. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just wanted to show you that footage and also for the youth leaders who haven't seen it yet until now. So, um, yeah, that was great fun on that night, doing something a bit different. All safety protocols were here too. <laughs> I chatted, had a good conversation with Luke Wachtel, our child safe person, to make sure we could make it work. So, and yeah, so um, we've done various activities, Bible studies, obviously a crucial part of the whole night, devotion. Um, we had leaders dress up for a Cluedo night, the bottom right photo there. Um, we often begin youth with games as well. So, all good fun. Um, and we look forward to what God has planned this, this term. So I'll just pray for our youth. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have um, to minister to uh, young people, to disciple them, to um, yeah, bring them up to know more about your kingdom. And yeah, we thank you for the opportunity, opportunity also to have fun and yeah, always continuously be here on a Friday night and build that net network with these young people. Bless this term and all that it has in store. In your holy and precious name, amen. We'll now have the readings for today. Our first reading for this Sunday is from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, various verses. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel and Jerusalem, and I applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the sons of men to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I have toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool? Yet he will be a master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun." This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labours under the sun. Because sometimes a man who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by a man who does not toil for it. This also is vanity 
and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and strain which which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of pain, and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his mind does not rest. This also is vanity. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading from today is for Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you once walked, where you lived in them, but now put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and foul talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old nature with its practices and have put on the new nature, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there cannot be Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man, but Christ is all, and in all. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading from today is from Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 13. Would you please stand for the Gospel reading? One of the multitudes said to him, Teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of all covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. All right. Yes, we're on. Good morning. It's been a few weeks since I've been up here. It's been a nice break, actually. Um... Who's had, did anyone go away on holidays? Who's been on a holiday? Put your hand up nice and high so I can see. Oh, fabulous. Yes, excellent to see. Who's had some sleep-ins over the last bit of time? Adults, who's had a sleep-in this weekend with this cold weather? Oh, you're no fun. Have you guys had sleep-ins? Oh, what? All right, well, I'm here to cheer you up this morning. Who likes a good knock-knock joke? Do we like a good knock-knock joke? Oh, fabulous. Okay, I've got my piece of paper because I'm not very good at knock-knock jokes. Are you ready? Knock-knock. Tank. Oh, you're welcome. I told you I'm not very good. Knock-knock. Canoe. Canoe come out and play? Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm clearly not very good at this. (laughs) But 
I thought I'd start with a knock knock joke because la- at the end of the last term, I was meant to be here to do this message. I thought, no, I'm going to save it for this term. Um, because, do you know, the Bible talks a lot about knock knock knocking. And I know that there's even a couple of songs about knock knock knocking um, that we like singing at the school. And the reason that we talk about knock, knock, knocking is that Jesus often tells us to knock on his door and it will be open. And his disciple friends, they said, he was telling them this and they went, what what do you mean? What are you you talking about this knock, knock, knocking? And he said, well, this is how you pray. They scratched their head and went, huh? What are you talking about praying? And he told it like this. He said, Let's say you went to a friend's house at night time. Who can do a knock, knock for me? Come on, everyone. Knock, knock, knock. Knock on the door. There we go. Okay. So the friend opens up. It's the middle of the night. And you say to your friend, I need bread. Show me with a thumb up or thumb down. Is your friend going to be very happy that you're just asking for a loaf of bread in the middle of the night? Yeah. Yeah thumb down. They're not going to like it. They go, what? Loaf of bread. You can wait until the morning. But Jesus then said that don't stop knocking. Keep knocking. Knock, knock, knock until the whole neighbourhood can hear you. Do you think your friend would give you the bread then? Yeah, I think they would just to get rid of you. Jesus says that's what it's like to pray. Keep knocking. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Might not happen straight away, but if you keep praying, then eventually things will happen. So as you go into your week, just remember that even though sometimes it feels like Jesus doesn't always hear you the first time, Maybe you just need to have that little persistent knocking because like that neighbour who will eventually give you the bread because you're making so much nuisance and open up the, wake up the whole neighbourhood. Jesus doesn't say you're a nuisance. He wants to hear you. It just sometimes takes some patience. Kids, we're going out to the back because we are going to talk about the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, which is the Lord's Prayer. So, my prayer today as I leave is let's all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All right, kids, let's go out the back. Jesus, the image of the invisible God, divinity confirmed in the transfigured world, our kingdom once conceived. Oh.
It is my privilege this morning to welcome our guest pastor who joins us this morning, Pastor James Windelick, of course, principal of the ALC. Um, James was born in 1964 um, in Lae. This is like, uh, this is your life, isn't it, really? Uh, born in 1964 in Lae, Papua New Guinea, and his parents, Trevor and Elizabeth, both served as teachers in various Lutheran missions in Papua New Guinea. And of course, I mention that, of course, because 
we have very close uh, mission relationships with our, our friends in Azaroka. Pastor James has served as pastor in various congregations within Queensland and South Australia, and he has also served as the chair of the National Safe Place Committee, the chair of the Fink River Mission, and as an assistant bishop in the SANT district. James is married to Karen. They've got three sons, Joshua, Samuel and Noah. Pastor James, welcome to Golden Grove. On behalf of the congregation, we thank you for joining us and sharing God's message with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. God's grace and peace be with you. I spoke to my parents yesterday morning, as I do pretty much every Saturday morning, and they said be sure to say hi to anybody there who remembers us, anybody at Golden Grove who remembers us. Um, it's probably been, what, 30, 40 years since they've served here and lived here among you. Um, but if you do remember them, they say hi. It's good to be with you. I bring you greetings from Australian Lutheran College. Um, if you don't know who Australian Lutheran College is, it's the tertiary institution of the Lutheran Church of Australia and New Zealand. Um, so we train pastors, teachers, lay workers, volunteers, um, all sorts of people um, at both, um, what would you call it, short course level, um, right through to VET, leading on to higher education, to degree levels, and you can even do a PhD with us if you want to. You're more than welcome to join in. So that's who we are. And I'll keep emphasising we're owned by you. We're owned by the Lutheran Church of Australia. Um, we belong to you and we're part of you. So thanks for having me here. Um, I want to make use of the second reading you heard this morning from Colossians chapter 3 where Jesus, uh, where, yeah, where St Paul said, set your mind on the things that are above. In other words, be heavenly minded. Be heavenly minded in your earthly life, in your daily grounded earthly life. And what does he mean by that? Because if you're going to be heavenly minded, my image of somebody who's heavenly minded is that they're so heavenly minded that they just keep bumping into everything as they walk around on the earth because their mind is somewhere else, their thoughts are somewhere else. For me, there's a real separation between being heavenly minded um, and living in the here and the now. But for St. Paul, there wasn't. For St. Paul, there was a seamless connection between heaven and earth, between that other place that we can't even imagine and the place that we meet and are confronted with, or confronted by each and every day. So let's work with that. What does St. Paul mean? Set your mind on the things that are above. I'll rest it here. To begin with, I've got a question for you. What do you think occupies a pastor's thoughts on a Sunday morning? What do you think Takes, takes over the pastor's thoughts on a Sunday morning, particularly, let's say, a visiting pastor. Um, your common everyday pastor who's here every Sunday probably goes through a fairly similar routine with you each week. But when you're a visiting pastor, what do you think occupies a visiting pastor's thoughts on a Sunday morning before standing here um, preaching? I hope it goes well. Yeah. I hope the coffee's good. Well, I know about the coffee, so I know it's good here. <laughs> How do they do things? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because if they know I'm here, <laughs> what might that mean? Anything else? Those responses are lovely. Those responses are fabulous. They don't sound terribly heavenly minded, do they? They sound really earthly grounded, focused on the practicalities of being here. My answer to the question was this. What shall I wear? The blue or the grey? The grey goes well with the carpet. The blue sort of stands out a bit and looks quite vibrant, doesn't it? Yeah. So what am I going to wear? And do I go with the brown shoes? You know, just to be a little bit out there? Yeah. Or do I go with the um, conservative, sedate sort of black shoes? I went brown today. I went with the blue suit. But what do I wear? And what's behind that question? It's not just a matter of covering myself, which mercifully I've done for the sake of all of you. What's behind that question? Will I fit in? Will they like me? Will I be accepted? 
all of those sorts of questions, all of those sorts of anxious questions of belonging. Now, St. Paul in this text talks about clothing ourselves. St. Paul understands something about clothes. Clothing ourselves isn't just something we do for practical reasons, to keep warm, to keep covered, to keep modest. Clothing is also about identity. It communicates who we are. It communicates something about ourselves, because if I was shabbily dressed here, you would believe something about me that you wouldn't be thinking about me, seeing as I've put a little bit of effort into wearing something nice. But it's also about respecting the people that you're with, isn't it? Showing respect to the people that you're among as well by making a bit of effort and presenting yourself well. So clothing yourself isn't just practical in that sense. It's about constructing an identity, starting to build an identity. Portraying yourself in the way that you want to be seen, in the way that you want to be received, in a way that you want to be welcomed. So it's about a social exchange as well, isn't it? If I present myself in this way, hopefully you'll receive me in a generous and kind sort of way as well, and I will, even as a visitor, even as a stranger, I'll be accepted and I'll fit in. So there's all sorts of rules that go around this constructing an identity, all sorts of rules. And we learn those rules so well that we also learn how to manipulate them, manipulate them to our own best advantage. And people can become quite obsessed with the identities that they construct. Obsessed so much that they want to control every situation that they go into, every situation that they enter into by manipulating those rules of who I am, who I want to be, how I want to be seen. Why? So that I can gain some sort of advantage over life. So that I can actually get a reward for all of the effort that I put in. So that there's something that flows back to me for all that I've done in terms of constructing my identity. I want to get an advantage on over the people who are around about me to stand out, to come off better for it. That's the situation that Paul was writing into in the book of Colossians, the whole book of Colossians. The community that Paul wrote to, the community of Colossae, was a community that was heavily invested in constructing its own identity, constructing its own life, leading to what they saw as a fullness of life. A life lived to its fullest. And they had all sorts of rules that went with that. And they imported all sorts of philosophies from outside of their Christian faith to support them in their ambitions. And one of the philosophies that they imported from outside of themselves was this, that somehow between them and heaven, you remember that place where Paul says, set your mind on the things above? Well, for them, it wasn't that easy. Because there was a whole lot of inter interference between them and the things that are above. And they called it the, the realm of the spiritual demons. And so they believed that they had to go through a whole lot of practices, a whole lot of behaviours, a whole lot of rituals to penetrate through that realm and to reach God. And in reaching God then, that they would enjoy all sorts of benefits that came through it. So that was a community at Colossae. That's what they believed about their own Christian faith and how they practiced their own Christian faith. And so when you said to them, who are you? Show me who you are. That's who they were. We're a community that believe in God. We're a community that believe in Jesus Christ. But we also know from our own bitter experience that it's not that easy, that there's some things that we have to do to penetrate through to get some advantage from our faith in God through Jesus Christ. We have to manipulate the situation around us so that we can enjoy some benefits flowing back to us from God. And that's the identities that they were building for themselves. Now, you might think that that sounds ridiculous, but it's exactly what you and I constantly do. You and I constantly do that. 
because our minds aren't naturally set on the things that are above. We've learnt that if you want to get anywhere in life, there's stuff you've got to do. There's stuff you've got to do as you build a life for yourself. If you want to get a job, dress well. Don't slouch. If you want to be in a relationship with somebody, show some interest in them. Turn up. Be pleasant. Be kind. If you want to get on with people in general, be tolerant, be inclusive, be accepting. If you want to get ahead in life, save your money, build your wealth and enjoy a good life. You and I live that same dual life that those people lived back at Colossae where we juggle this tension between the things that are above and the things that confront us each and every day. And then we end up building these confused identities between trusting God completely, but also feeling like there's something that every day we have to punch through to get ahead. Does that sound remotely familiar? Is it possibly true? Is that the life, the confused life, that we try and construct for ourselves? And so St Paul writes, you know what? Your identity is not your own construction. Your identity is not something that you have to build for yourself. Your identity is given to you, is handed to you. And it's not an identity that's under construction, it's an identity that is complete. You remember I said the people at Colossae learned for, yearned for things to be full, a fullness of life. In other words, life was never complete, it was always on the way towards being complete. But Paul writes, That's not your life. Your life is not under construction. Your life is completely constructed. It is full. It is fulfilled. And where does Paul start with? Or what does Paul start with? Your baptism. Your baptism. That's where your identity begins where heaven comes rushing towards you, comes rushing towards you at full speed and meets you there in the waters of baptism. And there in the waters of baptism, God meets you in death, in Christ's death, and says, here, I'm going to take your death and hand you back Christ's life. That's who you are. You are complete because that's the life and that's the identity I have won for you and now that I give to you. Set your mind on the things above because that's where you are. That's who you are. And then Paul goes through a list of really interesting sort of moral reflections I'll read them for you again. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire and greed, which is idolatry. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander and abusive language from your mouth. Why does Paul say that? He's not trying to be super moral. He's not trying to be a prude. He's not trying to wreck everybody's life and happiness and fun and enjoyment. That whole list of things that I just read out are all the shortcuts we take to control the world around about us. 
when we're trying to construct our lives, when we're trying to build our lives, when we're trying to construct our own identities, when it's not working, when we're not getting ahead, when we don't feel as though we can manage the situation around about us, what do we do? Dummy spit. We take shortcuts. We try and manage the, uh, the situation around about us with, the, with, the, with nothing but the force and the power that we feel we have within us. Why do people cuss? Why do people swear? Because it makes them feel powerful. Why do I cuss and swear? Because it makes me feel powerful without thinking really about what's going on in that moment and what might be going on in the relationship with the, that I have with the people around about me. All of those things are the shortcuts we take to try and build who we are. And all they cause is dysfunction. All they cause is ang uh, pain. Pain to us and pain to those around about us. But what does it mean to be heavenly minded? What does it mean in action, in the doing? What does it mean to be baptised, to have our identities handed to us, complete and whole and full in every way imaginable? Well, Paul goes on to describe that too. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. Those are not the shortcuts. Those are putting in the hard yards with each other. That's what it means to be heavenly minded and earthly grounded as a baptised child of God. That's what it means to live out the identity that has been constructed for you, given to you by God through Jesus Christ. That's what it means to live in this everyday life. We're getting ahead is not the issue anymore because it's all yours already. It's all been won for you already. That's what it means to engage in a heavenly way with those around about you. Not to get an advantage over them, but to receive them, and more importantly, to be received by them. That's what life together in this heavenly way, looks and sounds like. So it's not a life that's governed by the question, what must I do? What should I wear? What are the rules that I have to live by? But it's a life shaped by this insane freedom that has been won for us. A freedom that is not burdened by words like must, should, have to. But a, a freedom that finds expression in words like will, want to, give. It's a new way of being. It's a new way of seeing ourselves. And it's hidden. It's hidden even from us because we often forget who we are. And we slip back into those other ways day after day after day after day. That's why God persists with us. That's what God's persistent love looks like for us, to remind us of who we are. Set your mind on the things above because that's where your identity begins. And that's where it will also reach its complete fulfilment. So what should a pastor think about? A visiting pastor think about on a Sunday morning before preaching in a church service? Well, he should think about getting dressed. It's a good idea. And that's the only reason, just because it's a good idea. 
And then he might start to think about, I wonder who those wonderful people are that I'll meet today. Those wonderful heaven-sent people, heaven-created people, heaven-formed people. I wonder who they might be. And I wonder who we might be together for the sake of each other. That's the heavenly vision. Set your mind on the things that are above. Not on the things of this earth. Because they ultimately don't matter. And they ultimately will let all of us down. Trust where trust belongs. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds safe in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. James, uh, please stand for our next song during which your free will offerings will be received.
Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. Grab a seat. Uh, we say the offering prayer together. Gracious God, teach us to use our possessions wisely by offering them back to you and helping other people. Amen. So we'll say the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, and ascended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He is sent into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we get into the prayers, um, I'll, well, we've received a couple of prayers which I'll um, pray before we get in the main prayers. Dear Lord, uh, we thank you um, for your kingdom and we pray for your guidance so we can be heavenly minded, focused on you and all that you do. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the equipment that has been made available uh, for uh, Jeff and Erin uh, through NDIS. We thank you for that. And um, we also thank you for all the fun that we had last night at the Trivia Night. Um, I pray for continued events like this where we can continue to build community together. In your holy and precious name, amen. We'll have the rest of the prayers for today. As people who have been blessed with treasures on earth and even better treasures in heaven, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the abundant blessings of body and soul you give us each day without our asking. Thank you that our life rests securely in Christ our greatest, our greatest wealth, and not in earthly possessions or even earthly life. Forgive us, Lord, for being greedy and for placing our trust in wealth and possessions. Heal the hurt and division that greed has caused, free us from all worry, and renew us each day with the self-sacrificing mind of Christ. Bless all people in their proper work, and give us joy by knowing that the good we do serves you by serving others. Remove exploitation and bitterness from the workplace and give work to those who are unemployed. Guide the leaders of our nations so that they may use the resources of this land and its people for the good of all. Teach the wealthy to be generous. Turn all, driven by greed, away from their idolatry and free people who are addicted to gambling. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church that it may not store up riches or earth but riches on earth, but riches in heaven. Give it a clear message for forgiveness and new life through Christ in an age of greed and death, and turn those who put their trust in earthly possessions to seek the true riches that come from you. Thank you for the, con for the co cooperation and fellowship we enjoy in this congregation. Bless all who are generous here with their time and talents and watch over all people that we received your salvation and acknowledge your generosity to us. We pray for the poor, dear Father, that they may or they would receive all they need for a good life. Bring the dying to place their life into your hands for Jesus' sake and meet the needs of all we know personally to be in want and whom we now name silently in our hearts. God our Father, pour out on us the great and generous riches of your grace and mercy 
and hear our prayers for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So as we leave, we got the blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and give us his peace. Amen. Well, please stand for our final song, Grace Alone. How good are these guys, hey? Fantastic. Thank you so much to our Salt Factory band. So great, you guys. Um, uh, Pastor James, thank you again for joining us this morning and sharing God's Word. Would you please put your hands, join me in. Please. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Um, before I get on to the announcements, uh, quiz night last night, great turn up. Uh, I think we had about 80 or 90 people, I think, turned up last night. It was a really good night of fellowship and... Um, we raised over $1,000, so it was a pretty good night after all. And uh, yeah, thank to all those 
Thank you to all those that, uh, that helped me in, uh, in arranging that. It was a fantastic night. Um, okay, um, let's move into some announcements. Okay, so the new edition of the August Vine is now out. Um, they are available in the foyer. So if you haven't grabbed one of those, um, please do so. They are available in the foyer. Golden Grove Pong. <laughs> Golden Grove Pong. This is uh, the official launch today for the Golden Grove Pong. It's coming up uh, in September. Friday, uh, September the 16th, uh, 3 o'clock it kicks off through till about 1 o'clock on the Saturday the 17th. We're actually going to organise a, was it a barbecue in the morning? Yeah. It's on the slide. It's on the slide. Just read the slide, Hamps. Um, so, so we've got, yeah, a barbecue uh, on that Saturday. Uh, great opportunity to come along and, uh, and have a, a fellowship lunch. But if you'd, like to get, uh, to, if you'd like to register, you can now register online for that. The school is also doing a, a, a funds raising uh, uh, scale thing. -y thing. Um, and so from the, different, from the different houses. Is that right, Joel? I hope I'm getting this right. So, um, yeah, so please uh, get involved in this year. Come along, join in the fun. Um, you can come along, have a bit of a hit, or just come along for the social activity. Come along for the lunch on the Saturday. But uh, please get involved in the Pong. Next Sat uh, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, August the 7th, between 12 and 2, we're actually doing a bit of a video. We're putting together a video down at Civic Park. If you'd like to be part of that, Please join us in that as well. That's next Saturday between 12 and 2 at Civic Park. Come along, join in the fun and wear something sporty. Have I covered that, Joel? Did I, did I nail it? I hope so. By the way, Pastor, you nailed it in that suit this morning too, by the way. I just thought I'd mention that. Oh, now come on, we did all right last night. You're a port supporter. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> Okay, um, the, um, my eyes, I might have to just do this. Uh, Science Mania, Golden Grove Lutheran Church, uh, August the 12th between 3.45 and 5. Entry is $4 and it's uh, from foundation to year 5. So you can book um, online or just give Joel a call. Yep, okay. I'm not very good at this. Okay, we've got uh, the Moonta Bay Jetty. Uh, the GAF have got a, um, an event down at Moonta Bay, Saturday 13th of August, kicking off at 10.30. Um, should be a great, uh, great afternoon down there at York Peninsula. Um, if you'd like to know more details, please get in contact with uh, Graham. Teaching. This is our biblical story for everyone. Teaching uh, on Saturday. This is on the 20th. It kicks off on the 20th of August. Now, we'd like you to register. Registrations close in a couple of weeks' time. This is going to be a fantastic event. Um, it runs over around about, is it six weeks? Is that right? Is it? No? There's six sessions. Right, okay, six sessions over 18 months, there we go. So you don't have to, um, if you miss one, it, that's fine, all right, but you can st st certainly catch up. Each session has its own entity, all right? So um, if you'd like more details, please see Ruth, all right? But registrations do close in a couple of weeks' time. It's a great opportunity, get involved. Um, and as I said, uh, registrations do close in a couple of weeks' time. Birthdays for this week. Uh, Graham is celebrating his birthday. We've got uh, Jackson, Dee, Fiona, John, and Ruth also celebrating the birthday this week. So uh, congratulations to all those people celebrating birthdays this week. Thanks very much for uh, joining us this morning here and online. And of course, if you'd like to join us for a copy, please do so. Thank you again. Yibbida yibbida. That's all, folks. Oh. 